So in the first chapter, we've had an opportunity to cover off the three variables with photography, which are really how much light comes into the camera, how long the camera is exposed for as far as film or the sensor, and how sensitive the sensor or the film is. What I wanted to do now is really talk about shutter speed. Uh, shutter speed is obviously something that is going to have an impact on what you're able to do with the camera. However, the biggest difference is that you can use shutter speed not only to capture time as far as a moment, uh, but you can use it as an effect that you can get some different ways and means of taking shots. So one of the things that we need to talk about is a bit of a speed curve. And I'm going to put that up on the screen. And really what the speed curve allows us to do is understand that whether you're going to use a, a smartphone or a camera, the speed curve is going to be impactful. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about right now is the difference between this camera and some of the more modern mirrorless cameras. This camera does not have a vibration reduction sensor capability in it where the actual sensor floats uh, three or five axes and the lens that's on this camera does not have vibration reduction so that there'd be a motor in here that would have the out one of the elements or a few of the elements floating along uh, and uh, it has an impact on how long you can handhold the camera for. With a camera like this or a traditional film camera with no vibration reduction, there was a floor that most people could handhold a camera steadily enough to avoid what's called camera shake, where there'd be a little bit of blur due to the motion. That floor is 1 60th of a second. That's pretty well programmed in all cameras. And you're going to come across that situation when you're in aperture priority mode or program mode. So if you're going to use the camera in an automated uh, fashion, the computer is going to fight as best as it's can to, able to keep you above or at 1 60th of a second. Now, obviously manual mode, you have 100% control over the shutter speed for your images. So that you have to keep that in mind as you're taking your shots. Um, and you're going to have to balance that conversation off between the shutter speed, the aperture for the effect, and the ISO. If you reach that floor of 1 60th of a second, you may need to increase your ISO. Or the alternative is to use a tripod like I'm using to shoot this video. And that's going to come in handy for certain types of scenarios, especially when you want to capture motion over a long period of time to create an effect where you're blurring out the background or you're actually blurring the motion of the object like water. And there's going to be, you know, a time where you want to take a picture like that. And it's going to take a lot longer than what you might think if you haven't done it before. So to blur water, you're looking at on average 10 to 30 seconds. There's no possible way, it doesn't matter how good the VR system is in the camera or in the lens, that you're going to be able to handhold it that long. So the key is, is knowing what you're going to do. If you are going to shoot a subject of a person, generally you're looking at uh, 1 one twenty-fifth of a second because people do move. And a lot of the systems today, you know, are able to compensate for motion, but you can't compensate for your subject. If you're going to get into sports, you're looking into something like 1 500th of a second so that you can have a ball or a puck in this instance showing some form of motion to actually make it look like there's action. And then as you go further up the speed curve, you're looking at something where you're into the thousandths of seconds. And where that comes into play is when you're looking at things of high speed motion, like a car, uh, like a aircraft, or a bird. Birds need a very high shutter speed in order to capture them. You'd be surprised how fast. So when you're looking at these types of things, keep in mind that shutter speed is going to have an impact. Now I did mention that I usually look at 1 500th of a second for action. However, there are some caveats to it. So as I want to go ahead and track something, I can track that object and have the background blurred out. And you're in when you're looking at something like an aircraft propeller where you want to have the full disc where it's totally blurred out but you just get the circle, you don't see the blades you're in around 1 60th of a second. Uh, if you're shooting something like an aircraft, 
that's further up where you got long lenses and it may be more difficult to be able to get the speeds like that. Uh, the faster you go, the more likelihood you're going to see some motion at the tips, but you're actually going to see the propeller blade itself. So these are things that you need to keep in mind. And as you go further up the speed curve, that's where you're into something like jets. Uh, anywhere between a thousandth or a sixteenth, sixteen hundredth of a second is more than enough. But when you start to get into birds, you're a lot faster than that, almost twice as fast or even higher. Especially if you're shooting small birds with very fast wing movements or even the raptors. So I just want to leave that uh, idea in your mind right now as far as speed. There are some things that you can do with panning. But always keep in mind that you have full control over the camera, whether you're in shutter speed, priority mode, aperture, or manual, to create an effect that goes above and beyond the exposure that you're trying to do.